So today at the time of publishing this video, it's May 1st, the first day of the month. And that means it's time for a monthly review. And doing this monthly review properly is the reason behind the success of any trader. If you review your things right, you can improve. If you don't, you fail. So today we'll talk about how to do this right. What's up traders, welcome back to once again Bangkok in Thailand. Today I want to share with you a process or mostly like things to look at and to go through and to think about when you do your monthly review. I think this is a process that's super important for any traders and it's not just about reviewing trades, there's much more to it than only trading and, and results. There's a lot of things you can look at and things you can think about to make sure that your next month can be even better and that your next year is planned out and that you are going to achieve your goal for the coming months and years. So I want to share with you these four tips on your monthly reviews. The first one consists of getting a complete financial report of your performance as a trader. And that means like everything. So you want to think about what's your performance, what are your trades result overall, but also what, what commission did you pay to the broker? And was that worth it? How do you spend money on like traveling, maybe conferences, maybe education? How, how did you spend your money? Like a business would do the same thing. So like think about any store at the end of the month, they will look at their profit and loss on their expenses and their the profit from the, the thing they sold. But they also look at like the other things they paid around. So what service did they pay? Was it useful or not? You won't think about like everything you spend money on, how much money is it bringing back to your business? And if not, then you wanna cancel that and, and move forward. Like if you do this right, then all the platform you spend money on, do they really help you improve or not? The trading journals you spend money on or the add-ons or the script or whatever. Do they help you make more money? And I can also be like the coaching. So you have a coach, you pay $3,000 per month. Is that worth it or not? You look at the result and you can decide if it's a good decision or not to have it. But a lot of people, you'll be surprised. They have things that they pay for every month and they think that's necessary to pay for it because they've done it for a long time. But think about and you want to really be able to track how much money does that bring in. And if the result is like break even, so like you pay 3K a month for something and it's bringing you 3k a month, that's break even. So you don't need it. You could just cancel it and you would get the exact same result in terms of total PL. So that allows you to kind of take a step back and look at everything you spend money on and everything you win in return and what makes sense, what doesn't. And then you can readjust to make sure that your return increases over time. And that not just a return, but like your PL of your business. So the profit minus the, the, the losses and the expenses make a bigger return over time. That's the principle. The second thing is calculating your compliance rate or compliance percentages or level. And that's one thing, but I, I think it's like overall, it's really important for you to have metrics to track every month and you can look at them every month. These allow you to improve because if you have no metric, you cannot improve. If you track something, you're more likely to improve it. So you want to track every month some things. I will talk about what to track every month, but the more you track things, the more you can improve them and you can go at the end of the month, look at your result. How did you perform? What were your metrics? Are they better than last month or worse? And what can you do to improve those metrics? And the one that's I think really important to track is your compliance level. So how compliant are you with your plan? Is it a 85%, like 85% of the time you follow your rules or a 50%? 50% of the time you follow your rules. 50% of the time you don't follow your rules. And that you track for every trade, then you add it up at the end of the month and look at the overall picture. How is it? Is it good or bad? And then no matter where it is at this month, you want to improve it the next month and find a way to make this better. Because that's when you can track compliance level. That's super important. The other one you can track is how many trades you journal. So sometimes people forget to journal trades. Like it happens to me before. Now I'm better at it. But before that, I used to like journal about like 70 trades out of 100. And that's not good. So how many trades did you journal out of all the trades you took? How many reviews of the chart did you miss? Those are all things you can think about. And the goal of these metrics is that once you work on them and you improve them, your bottom line result will improve. So let's say you work on your compliance level, you get it better. So it's like at 95 instead of 85, then you're probably gonna make more return. And you're probably gonna be able to improve. And that's the point here. Over time, this will also help you increase your size. So let's say you start with a lower size because you have a, an account and you don't wanna risk the risk you should risk on that account, you wanna go start lower an increase over time, which all students in the Disaster Academy do. They increase over time their size or their account size to be able to scale up their trading over time. Once you have the compliance level in line, like 95% plus of compliance on your trades, then you can start to increase and level up. This is kind of like a reward. So also what you can do, which we teach in the Academy, is once you reach that compliance level, you reward yourself. If you go below that, then you don't reward yourself. So you can find a way to make it a positive thing when you reach that goal, 
but then a negative thing when you don't reach it so that you're more likely to reach it next month and that works really well this like reward punishment thing works super well for a lot of people so you might want to try it out the third thing you have to do in your monthly review is to look at your equity curve and Michael Thoma whom I work with in the academy says that looking at your equity curve is pretty much like looking at paint dry on a daily basis but when you look at it on a monthly basis that's better you get a better perspective on things you see how things improve what, what exactly happened did you get a drawdown that you recover or did you get just a big drawdown or what exactly did you like do during that month because it's one thing to look at the PL. or so yes I got like uh, 3k last month or 4k last month or whatever but how did that turn out maybe if you went like in a drawdown then you recover that's good that, that's really good for your confidence but you need to look at that if you don't look at your PL curve for the month it's hard to know what you went through and so you want to take note of that and if you've been able to have a good month where like you recover something you want to keep track of things you want to write down what you did how like how did you get back on track so that if that happens again you have a recipe to get back on track and so that equity curve is really useful and on the times where you have a bad month at least you can know like what happened before that maybe you've been up like 30 percent for the year then you have a bad month like a minus five percent but on the overall picture that's not much so that's what makes your equity curve useful also and step number four or the fourth thing you want to look at is your big picture plan so in other words what is your goal with trading what do you want to get to exactly what's your vision you want to think about this and maybe you want to adjust your vision maybe things have changed you have a different perspective or you took a coaching or a course like our academy link below and then your view of things changes you want to change things right and, and that's where thinking about these things these goals these visions you have in mind can be helpful and also some big motivator if you do them right we teach people in the academy to do their goals in proper ways that they're motivated by them and they can look at them daily and that's super useful as well but once you have these goals you have to revalue them every month and you have to think about well in the next month what things do you want to take action on to be able to get closer to that goal okay, maybe it's like a different business structure for trading maybe it's like a different strategy you want to work on maybe it's like a backlist you want to complete and planning these things first is super useful because most people don't plan they just go into their day to day and they trade, 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 they work on some things when they feel like it, but they don't have a plan to get to their goals. And that plan is super useful. That plan is how you reach your goals and how you eventually move forward in a calculated manner, not just like randomly, but in a consistent manner. So that's the fourth thing. Also, when you're in the day-to-day -to -day too much, you tend to forget about your goals. You tend to kind of be stuck in the thing that don't go well, things that go well sometimes, and you don't have a view of like the future, what you want to get to, and why you do things you do right now. And so that's why it's super useful. So I hope these tips make sense. I'll leave a summary in the description below if you want to check those tips out. I'll also leave a link if you want to apply to our academy where we work with people one-on-one -on -one and in our mastermind calls to help them reach their goals and trading and eventually quit their job. So link below for that. And make sure you comment below in the description. I want to hear what's your favorite tip on that with the four we talked about. What would you apply? I want to hear that in the comment below. Here are a few comments for the past view. I appreciate your comments as always. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.